So now let's talk about a very interesting database which is Amazon Timestream Fast Scalable Serverless Time Series Database. So how fast is it? And what is the time series database? So let's find out. So now let's talk about a very interesting database which is Amazon Timestream Fast Scalable Serverless Time Series Database. So how fast is it? And what is the time series database? Let's find out. So before moving forward, let's design an application, our very own weather application, which shows us the temperature of cities at a given point of time. And it also shows what is the weather like for that particular time. So now to achieve this, we need the time and the data about what is the temperature and condition at that particular time. And for the UI, we need a graph that actually shows the time and temperature graph. So that's how we are going to denote what pointers we have. And at 8 a.m., as you can see, we have the temperature at 2 degrees and it will rain, obviously. And at 10 a.m., it will be around 12 degrees and there is a slight chance of rain. And 1 p.m., the temperature will be around 22 degrees and it's slightly windy. And similarly, we have 4 p.m., we have uh, it around minus 2 degrees centigrade. And at 8 p.m., it is around 2 degrees. I don't know which city is having so much fluctuations in the temperature but okay not a problem uh, similarly we have other data so this is a data set that we have so temperature and the time and what we understand here is that for our application to work we need the data at a particular time so that we can represent that and this data has to be accurate and shouldn't be manipulated and we can also denote that it's a stream of data that comes in as an input because it is going to change every day and every hour, every minute, every second. And here we can make sure or and here we can make use of a database that can help us achieve this or track this. And that's where a time series database comes in handy. And that's why a time series database contains data for each point of time. And this is not a new concept. We have a lot of time series databases that are already available to us like InfluxDB, KDB+, Prometheus and others and there are a lot of variations to this as well but we are here to discuss about time series or Amazon time series so let's talk about this. So now let's see the architecture or the high level architecture when we use time stream. So we have the data, the real time data which we feed to the time series database. With the time series or time series database or time stream database you have to understand three concepts interpolation approximation and smoothing so when it comes to interpolation as for mathematics interpolation is a type of estimation a method of constructing or finding new data points based on the range of a discrete set of known data points so what aws tells us is that if your time stream data is missing values for certain events at certain point of time you can estimate the values of those missing events using interpolation your time series database provides you the interpolation functions and it also has around four variants like linear interpolation, cubic spline interpolation, last observation carried forward interpolation that is LOCF and constant interpolation. And here we are not going to discuss this in depth because it's too much information for you at this time. And when it comes to smoothing approximation, these are also techniques for time series forecasting where you predict the future data point based on the past values that you have. Mostly we do a weighted average of values based on the observation that we have. So these are some of the functions and algorithms used as a part of the time series database to provide you the data and its outcome, which can be used for analysis, prediction, and thus we get the data for our application. So Amazon Timestream is a fast, scalable, fully managed, purpose-built time series database that makes it easy to store and analyze trillions of time series data points per day. So it's perfect for our application, isn't it? But uh, wait, let's see what it can provide us for us to achieve the level of performance we need for our application. And for that, we need to understand a few core concepts related to the time series database. So the first one is time series. So this is basically a sequence of one or more data points or records recorded over a time interval, like our temperature and time data that we had or it can be CPU or memory utilization of an EC2 instance over time. The second one is a record. 
uh, that is basically a single data point in a time series for example at 8 pm temperature is 32 degrees so it's a single data point third one is dimension an attribute that describes the metadata of a time series so this has dimension name and a dimension value for example if you have dimension is city the dimension value is new york or mumbai or delhi so the fourth one is measure so the actual value being measured by the record like what temperature it recorded what was the weather here also we have measure name and measure value so if suppose your measure name is humidity then the measure value is actual humidity level like what percentage is the humidity the next one or the fifth one is timestamp so indicates actually when a measure was collected for a given record indicating the time at which it was collected so it's a simple one sixth one is table so a container for a set of related time series it's like your collected data points like your data table and the last one is the database so that is basically your top level containers for your tables so these are some of the most important concepts or terms for us to remember in time series database and whenever you're having a discussion about time stream uh, with someone then these pointers will be really helpful so these are some of the important terms for us to remember in the time series database that is amazon time stream and coming back to how time stream actually works aws has given a very good summary about how the time stream actually works so we can discuss more about this so in time stream a database contains zero or more tables and each table contains zero or more time series i'll tell you how so each time series consists of a sequence of records over a given time interval at a specific granularity each time series can be depicted using its metadata or dimension its data or measure and its timestamp so these two that you see here are the series and this is the record which is a single data point in the time series or in a time series so this is your record and these two are the series so you can see how it is being laid out here here in series one you see that we have the dimension city and the dimension value as new york we have the measure name as temperature and the measure value as 32 and 23 and we have the timestamp which indicates when a measure was collected or a given record indicating the time it was collected so now let's talk about some of the internal architecture for us to understand how it manages the time series data and its processing so we all know that time stream has a serverless architecture and here we have to collect the data store it and process it so we have three states in the life cycle and that's how we will analyze this so the first stage that we have here is ingestion layer which is also the right architecture when you write the time series data to time stream database we use the right APIs and SDKs to do that obviously isn't it so this data is written to the ingestion layer like we are ingesting the data on the ingestion layer post which it is written to the memory storage layer as it is serverless you don't have to worry about or you don't worry about the huge amount of data as the data ingestion layer is designed to process trillions of events per second and it scales horizontally to match the specific requirements of your application so here if you see the incoming data is processed at the in-memory store which cleans up the data like removing duplicates and then it replicates it across three availability zones which brings us to the storage architecture or the storage layer so here in storage architecture the most important thing is magnetic storage which helps you to store your data based on the data retention policy and here the data is being optimized for read queries so that it can be retrieved at a faster rate so how does it work so it works because when we push the data to a time stream it is automatically indexed based on the attributes it has to ensure that that it has the best performance oriented data retrieval when we query the data so we have stored the data and processed it so how do we retrieve it that brings us to the query layer that is the query architecture so you might be thinking that uh, itna sara data hai and it's coming into the time stream and there will be huge amount of data that has to be queried so how does time stream handle this so here in time stream we have a purpose-built adaptive query engine so i'll repeat this once again so in time stream we have a purpose-built adaptive query engine so what does it do so the querying is taken care by a dedicated fleet of workers so fleet is like a group of ships 
moving together or a group of vehicles moving together with a purpose or a goal. So here the dedicated fleet of workers which are independent of the ingestion and the storage nodes that you see above help in executing the queries. So you might say if we query a large amount of data, so how it can handle this? So that's a very good question. So here what happens is time stream has a mechanism of massive parallelism between the query execution fleet and the storage fleet. And more so, the most important part for you to remember is the number of workers provisioned to run a given query is determined by the complexity of the query and the data size. So huge amount of data to query, the number of workers increases, but this is achieved with massive parallelism. And don't worry, time stream is also capable enough to access and combine data across storage tiers. So whichever you want, it can be queried. So whichever data you have, it can be queried. And it doesn't stop there. Time stream also as well can provide you virtually infinite scaling. And that is done by using the cellular architecture. So what is cellular architecture? Let's talk about that. As I told you that memory storage process incoming data from the ingestion layer removes extraneous data and uh, replicates the data across three availability zones. But for this virtually infinite scaling, what time stream does is that it creates or segments multiple smaller copies of itself, which is also called as cells and thus the name cellular architecture. And the best part is that you can have multiple cells per region as we have two here in the single region shown in the image. And this ensures we have 99.99 availability or 99.99% availability. You also might have doubts on how data will be ingested and read between cells. So here what happens is that you see the discovery endpoints. So time stream write and time stream query. The query requests are first processed by the discovery endpoint for both ingestion and query. And it redirects the request to the appropriate ingestion and query endpoints. And when you're working on this using APIs, as it will be transparently handled by the time stream, you will be never getting to know what exactly has happened because it will be smoothly handled by the time stream database. So that's one of the very beautiful things here. So you have the time stream query and the time stream write discovery endpoints. And within that, within each cell, you have the cellular endpoints. And as it is transparently handled by the time stream database, you will have a great time using this. So I hope it was clear. Let's move on. Now let's discuss about some of the use cases of using time stream. Let's take the example of DevOps. So let's discuss the use case for DevOps and how it can help monitor health and usage metrics and analyze data in real time to improve performance and availability. So here you have the source of the time series data and you can use Prometheus as your data collection agent which gets stored and processed and can be used for monitoring the health and analyzing the data in real time. And here you can see we are making use of QuickSight to create dashboards. We can use it with AWS SageMaker, Grafana, or even we can store it in other forms of data querying structures using object models. 